Okay. Hi everyone, this is SmithyQ from SmithyQ.com, and I'm here to analyze a quick game. This was posted on the Chess.com forums. This is by user Yason. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Yason. And he posted a game. He was white. He's a 1300 player against another 1300 player. And in about 10 moves, he got into a terribly lost position. He's down about 18 pieces. He could have resigned. But instead of resigning, he fought on. He tried to create as many threats as he could, and he actually was able to turn the tables and win in the end. So that's probably the best possible outcome, to go from losing to winning in a single game. So I want to take a quick look at this, because I believe that Jason put in the... Um, he approached this position, his completely losing position, with the best mindset, he, in a very practical way. And, well, it let him win instead of resigning on move 12. So let's take a quick look. So the opening here was the Scandinavian, let's see, there we go, d5, right, so pretty standard up to here, and then we got this, bishop f4. So what I want to do is I want to quickly look at the mistakes that white made, so that way we can recognize them and then fix them, and then we can also see um, what white did well in the second half of the game, where he tried to create threats. So this is the first mistake, bishop f4. Now. This should be a perfectly fine move. You're developing the bishop, it's on a great square, it's hitting a pawn, everything looks fantastic. Um, and it would be, except in this particular opening. There are, there are two issues with this. One is an idea for you, and one is an idea for black. For you, what often wants to happen is we want this bishop to be on this square, in general. The reason for that is the bishop is breaking this pin here, and it's eyeing the queen. So the queen always has to be careful. Um, if I just put this on the... I'll just put it here. So if black just plays normal moves, right, so he's playing completely normal, he then can easily run into this type of discovered attack, where now the bishop is attacking the queen, um, the knight's defended, knight can't be taken, and the knight is also threatening the c7 pawn, um, which would be a, a fork, a check. And in fact, the black queen doesn't have a lot of squares, right? If it retreats to uh, the most natural square, I mean, then it actually loses itself. So, in fact, black is just busted in this position. So this is one reason the bishop likes to be on the square. The second reason is that on f4, um, the bishop is very vulnerable to an eventual knight d5. I'm not saying this is the best move for black right now, but we notice how the knight is now hitting both the bishop and the knight, threatening the knight, the bishop probably has to drop back to d2 anyway, and black has won a tempo. So this is why bishop f4 is not the best move. Now is this a losing move? No, of course not. It's an inaccuracy. It makes your position slightly, slightly worse. But well, we don't want that to happen, do we? Something for next time. Anyway, uh, black played bishop g4, and then you played f3. Now, I've played the Scandinavian as black uh, for many years, and this is exactly the move that I want to see white make. I want him to make weakening moves. I want him to play f3, because that gives me something to attack later. It's unnecessarily weakening your position. You've got the right idea. The, the bishop is here. It's attacking your queen, so you kick it away right away. Um, you force it to move. But it creates weakness as well. Again, I've always found, as the black player in these positions, that I've disliked something like this. Because, just look at, just looking at this position in general, black is stuck with two choices in this position. He can either take, or he can retreat. If he takes, white now has two bishops. And in particular, this light square bishop can be very good. It can go to e4, so for example, d3, e4, where it's pressuring here. It can go to g2, um, once we move this pawn, so maybe do something like this, where it's on a perfectly long diagonal. It's absolutely fantastic. The bishop can go just about anywhere, honestly. It's a great piece. And white just has a very comfortable, very easy game, in general. I never liked playing this as black. What's the alternative? If we don't take after h3, and we just retreat, well then, white's got this interesting idea, where he can attack g4, uh, let's bring the knight in right away. All right, so we're attacking the bishop, but the goal isn't just to try to win the bishop. It's actually a bit more deeper than that. 
will reach a position like this, in which it's opposite side castling, and white already has a pawn storm coming. And this pawn storm is coming with incredible tempo, because the, the G pawn can easily hit the knight, or this pawn can come and hit the bishop. If black is forced to make a weakening pawn move like h6 at ever, oh look, his position is absolutely too. You're going to crush him. You dominate. And your pawns are so close to him, his pawns are nowhere near you. White's attack is very easy. This works very well in blitz. And I again, I've always found black's position much tougher to play in a line like this. So this is why f3 is an interesting idea, but it's what black wants. Black would much rather see this than this or this with all these arrows. Again, is this a losing move? No. But this is now two inaccuracies in the first six moves. Your position is becoming harder to play. His retreats to a natural square, develops, you then take, which again isn't the best move, but um, at this point, your position is coming very uncomfortable. A black is even better, I believe, slightly better. Develop, he castles. And so if we look at this, black has got, um, both his knights are developed, they're on their best squares. Your knight is on e2, which isn't great, but f3 is, is occupied. His queen is surprisingly hard to um, attack, right? You have no easy way of attacking it, and it can always slide back to d7 if necessary, over to a5. Notice how the rook is pinning your, uh, eyeing your queen. So, you're facing some difficulty. And then you play bishop, F, um, bishop e3. You retreat your bishop, you're trying to defend your d-pawn. Um, it's another move. You haven't castled. And honestly, um, you're probably close to losing in this position if black plays e5. Because again, you can't take because the rook's pinning your queen. If you try and advance to close the position, black's going to play knight b4, which is attacking the c2 pawn, it's attacking the d5 pawn, black wants to play e4 and bust you open, your king is stuck in the center, this bishop, black just has a dream position right now. White is in serious trouble, if you're not losing already. Black played a different idea, is in this position, he, he tried to attack right away, which is also possible. And then, um, I guess you didn't see the threat to your uh, c2 pawn. Perhaps you didn't notice that the queen and the knight were coming, so you simply castled. Well, so first black took a pawn, then he took a piece, then he took a rook. So, um, I guess we're 13 moves in and white is completely lost. White is busted. White resigned. Our white would be perfectly justified to resign here. However, um, as the old saying goes, you never win a game by resigning. And my philosophy, my ideas when I'm playing, is I want to force my opponent to find every resource in the position. If I can throw a speed bump at him, an obstacle that he needs to dodge, I'm going to do it. I mean, his position is winning. If he dodges it, I'm going to lose anyway. Right? I mean, <laughs> at least make him work for it. And if he doesn't dodge the obstacles, well, then I'm back into the game. Maybe I can turn it around. Because right? our opponent is actually, right now, in a very dangerous spot, because he thinks he's winning. He is winning. But if he starts thinking that way, and he thinks he can play whatever he wants, then he's in trouble. That's when it's so easy to blunder, because we stop thinking, we stop calculating. Meanwhile, you, here you know you're losing, so you really have nothing to lose. You can play sacrifices, you can play giant attacks, and if they work, awesome. If they don't, you're going to lose anyway. Right? So. This is um, it's a good idea. So in this position, does white have anything? Honestly, no, he doesn't. But, well, we can create threats. He jumps in, knight b5. And so, black is up several pieces. However, white does have three pieces near black's king. Coming in, notice that there's an attack here on the c7 pawn. And so, we're forcing black to do something. Now, it's pretty easy to defend this. You can play c6, and then uh, win a pawn. He's going to win a pawn regardless, right? There's no way um, black can stop that. But again, he's up two pieces, so getting up a pawn is no worries for him. So anyway, c6, knight takes a7, king c7, 
perfect sense. D5. And now, um, actually, in your annotations on the forum, Yason, you put double question marks on this move. Now, again, you're losing, so every move is uh, dubious. How, but this is the right idea, because you're opening lines. This is opening the D file. Okay? So maybe a rook can come here. You've got the d4 square for this knight, potentially. If your knight can land there, oh look, it's hitting the queen. If it can go here, or it can sacrifice itself here, opening up more lines. This is the right sort of idea, right? You're forcing black to do something. Black plays well, right? He just takes the pawn, offering exchange of queens. And um, your attack is running out of steam. You played knight b5 check, then he played king c8. Um, let's look at black's perspective for a second. You're in this position. You're clearly winning. How do you defend? Well, the main thing we want to look at is that this rook um, is attacking, um, is pinning this pawn. It's on the it's on the c file, and so probably the best spot for our king is anywhere but the c file. Um, and so instead of moving back like he did in the game. King b8, and I think white is, well, you've always been busted, but you don't even have any potential threats here. Um, your knight's attacked, and black wants to exchange queens. If you exchange queens, well, you're just gonna, you're just losing, right? You have no more threats, you have no attack, uh, I don't know, do we exchange knights? You've got no hope here anymore, so exchanging queens is out of the question. If you don't exchange queens, though, if you try and, you know, you come in, well, then he just does this. And, again, he's trying to exchange queens. You have no attack. You've got no evasion. Invasion. You've got nothing. Now, again, in a way, this is okay. You're just trying to create threats. You have, you had nothing to lose. Black found the right moves. You lost. Right? That's happened. Right? Instead, he backed up king c8. And so, you played queen a4. You're able to create more threats, right? Because now you've got a pretty big threat, right? You want to come in, and then you're going to take on b7. Things are suddenly looking a little bit scary for black, right? He can still defend. He's fine. Then he played king d7, trying to get his king out of the way. And, okay, let's back up. What's the threat in this position? Because again, let's try and give black some tips here. Or, what happens if our opponent's attacking us? King d7 is one possibility, right? We, we run away with the king. The other thing is we could think about blocking the attack, right? Because the threat isn't so much um, queen coming here in a4, sorry, to a8. The problem is, is that the king's going to move, and then the queen can come and take b7, right? So the, the problem is the king moving. If we could block this check, if um, queen a8 were to suddenly check, forcing us away, then we'd be okay. So a possibility is to play queen e5. Because now, if check, we block with the queen. It's not check anymore. Um, if we exchange queens, again, black is so happy. Uh, this knight is uh, not sitting in a happy spot. A happy spot. Queen's got to move somewhere. Um, if white plays a nothing move, maybe this knight can even escape and get back into the defense, right? Because once black gets all those pieces over here, the attack will be stopped, right? Possibility. Notice how um, something checked like this, we can always just retreat over here, d5, and black's fine. The rook and the queen are protecting each other. No problems. After king d7, you played rook d1. And it looks like you're winning material. Now we have to realize something here, is that I guess you're winning material, but you're already down a rook, a bishop, darn sounds, you're down a rook, a bishop, and a pawn. So you're technically down 5, 3, 1, uh, you're already down 9 points. And so if black were to simply exchange his queen for his rook, he's still actually up material. Right? But hey, you're doing better than when you started, right? You're, you've caused black enough threats that you're doing okay. The thing is, is that both of you miss that black could play knight d2 here. This stops the pin to the king. And if you try and do something, I don't know, like knight c2, 
Now uh, we can retreat. Let's go there. That makes it like a better square. Because now it's no longer a pin. The queen and the rook are defending this. Um, the queen could take that. And black is safe again. That's, that's a possibility. Another thing is that, again, black could just move his knight out of the way. And after we take... Yeah, let's take a bad knight. Why not? Again, it's not queen. He's got uh, two rooks and a bishop for uh, the queen. So black is still technically up material. Do you still have chances? Sure. Are you doing, again, much better than you were back here on move 11? Where uh, everything looked absolutely disaster? Yeah, you made progress. But black could survive. What happened, though, is that black made queen takes d1, queen takes d1, and then he moved his king to the, well, I guess the worst square possible. Now, though, checkmate. Right? So when we look at this game, I want us to realize something. It's easy to say that this is just a blunder by black on the very last move. And I guess it is. But for the last 10 moves, black has been under pressure. White has been forcing him to defend, right? His knights come in, he's sacrificing pawns, there's checks all over the place, threatening invasions, right? Black has been needing to defend. Black has likely used a lot of time here. And then it makes a lot of sense that in these tough psychological moment is where black finally cracks and white was able to win. All right? Now, was this a perfect game from white? No. Again, up until even that last move right here, if black were to, again, he moves his king somewhere else. All right? Uh, look, your knight's attacked. Maybe there's an exchange. Oh, that's, that's terrible. Uh, let's do that. All right. You still may have two pieces, but well, black has four. Black is still up material, right? Now, you did a very good job of, um, Jason, of trying to confuse the issue, of making black work for his win. You did exactly what you should have done, because if you were to resign, this wouldn't have happened, neither of you would have learned anything. But instead, back here, okay? Yeah, you played bad, right? But then you said... You could have resigned, but instead, you went forward, you attacked. You thought, let's make Black earn his victory. And in the end, you were able to, well, you, you got a swindle. You were able to uh, eke out a win you didn't deserve. But that happens to all of us, right? How often have we been on Black's side, in which we've had a completely winning position, and then an unfortunate blunder happens. Often what it is, is just like this game. The blunder didn't happen out of nowhere. Black put up, or the other side puts up resistance. They try and create as many crazy threats as they can, or they're just completely stubborn. We get frustrated, or we get low on time, or we think we're winning, so we stop thinking, and then, well, that's when the blunder happens. Okay? So, I hope this helps you. And I hope this is a, a good lesson for everyone out there, not just Jason, is that if you get into a losing position, right, and again, White was uh, completely lost right here, is before you resign, just ask yourself, can you do any tricks? Is there a speed bump, a roadblock, an obstacle you can throw at your opponent? You know, make him find every resource. He's going to win anyway, right? So do crazy sacrifices. If they work, all of a sudden you're a hero. If they don't, oh well. You're, you're going to lose anyway. Okay? So, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Again, I'm SmithyQ, SmithyQ.com. love talking about chess, so drop me a line. You can go to my blog or on chess.com. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.